Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Intermediate Algebra. In this video, we're going to look at 6.7, which is multiplying and dividing of complex numbers. And keep in mind, all the rules of math that we've learned, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, still hold true in the complex number system. So we don't have to learn anything new, except for we have to deal with that one imaginary unit of the square root of negative 1. Now, if we recall, when we simplified uh, negative radicals, we just pulled out that square root of i. That should be the first thing we do. Simplify these values before we do any mathematical operations. Because if we don't, we're going to make an error. And here's the thing. If we don't take out that i first, I'm going to show you how to do it the wrong way. So don't copy me. But if I use the product rule and ignore the fact that I have negatives under the radical, the product rule of radical says, well, if they have the same index, I can multiply them. Negative 2 times negative 7. That's what's under these indexes, and if, or radicals. If I do that, negative 2 times negative 7 is 14. This would be the square root of a positive 14, a negative times a negative. This is not the correct answer. Because the first thing we have to do in the complex number system is to separate that value of i, that square root of negative 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is assess, well, this would be i square root of 2. I just pull out that square root of negative 1, and I label it i. The square root of negative 7 is going to be i square root of 7. Now I can use the product rule of radicals. We would have the square root of 2 times the square root of 7, which is going to be the square root of 2 times 7 is 14. But we also have this i. i times i is i squared. And we defined in the last section how we can simplify i to some power. Well, i squared is negative 1. So if I simplify it further, I get negative 1 times the square root of 14, which is just negative square root of 14. Notice that's not the same as the square root of 14. It is a negative value. So this is the correct way to do it. Now, what if we have an imaginary number such as 7 minus 4i, where 7 is the real part and negative 4 is the b, the coefficient of i. Here we have the imaginary number with a real part of 3 and an imaginary coefficient of positive 1. Well, if we're multiplying imaginary numbers, we can use FOIL. And the reason why we can use FOIL is because we can treat this as a binomial. There are two terms in this parenthesis, and I'm multiplying it by two terms in that parenthesis. So let's just go ahead and use FOIL. The first term, 7 times 7, or 3, is 21. The uh, outer term would be 7 times i. The inner term would be negative 4i times 3 is negative 12i. And the last term would be negative 4i times i. Well, that would be negative 4i squared. So I used FOIL, but now I have to use those rules of i that we learned. I have to simplify. Well, I can combine like terms. 7i minus 12i is going to be negative 5i. Negative 4i squared, i squared is a power of i. It's equal to negative 1. So I have negative 4 times i squared, which is negative 1. Negative 4 times negative 1 is a positive 4. Now, the thing about multiplying in the complex number system is sometimes after we simplify those powers of i, we have more combining of like terms we can do, because 21 and 4 are real values that I can put together. 21 and 4 is 25. And then we have this negative 5i. I make sure that I write it in the standard form for complex numbers, a plus bi, where a in this case is 25, and the coefficient b is negative 5. So hopefully, we understand that we're just using FOIL. But we have to do a little bit more simplifying when it comes to the complex number. Now, if we recall when we talked about rationalizing denominators, if I had a sum or difference containing a square root in a denominator, I had to use its conjugate in order to rationalize a denominator. Well, that's a tool that we can use in the complex number system as well. 
And it's something called the complex conjugate. So let's first review what we have with the difference of squares. These terms are conjugates. That means the sign in between their terms are different. We have the sum of terms and the difference of terms. These are conjugates of one another. When we multiply them together, we get the first term squared minus the second term squared. But what happens if we're in the imaginary number system? Well, if I look at these conjugates, the only difference is the sum and the difference of their terms. What happens when I FOIL this out? Well, if I FOIL this out, a times a, a squared. Well, that's what we got here. The real part is the same as in the uh, real number system. Here, the middle term, a plus bi, we're multiplying those together. a times a positive bi is a bi. And then the outer term here, a times a negative bi, well, that's going to be negative a bi. And the last term, bi times negative bi, is a negative bi squared. Now, if we combine the middle terms, they cancel out. A positive abi minus abi, they cancel out. Here I have i squared, which I know is a negative 1, one of the powers of i. Negative b times negative 1 is a positive b. Oh, this should be squared because it was bi times bi, b squared, i squared, and a squared. Now, if we look at this, we have a squared plus b squared. How is this really any different than this? We have the sum of squares. In the complex number system, if we multiply a complex number times its conjugate, we get real values. This is real, and this is real. There is no uh, imaginary part to it anymore, but it is the sum of squares. This tool can help us rationalize denominators when it comes to complex numbers. Because what we have to consider is if I see an i in a denominator, I know that i contains a radical. It is the square root of negative 1. So just like we rationalize a denominator that had a summer difference, we used its conjugate, we do the exact same thing in the imaginary number system. And hopefully, we're comfortable with rationalizing denominators because we're going to use the same process. So to rationalize this complex number, I need to multiply by its conjugate. Well, the conjugate of 2 plus 3i would be 2 minus 3i. They are complex conjugates. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. Now, in order to simplify this, I have to do quite a bit of foiling. Well, if I FOIL the bottom, it's going to give me the sum of squares. Because in the real number system, it gave me the difference of squares. In the complex system, it gives me the sum of squares. So I could use that as a shortcut and say it's going to be the first term squared plus the last term squared. So let's just do that as a shortcut. 2 squared is 4. And 3i squared, or negative 3i times 3i is going to be 9 time, negative 9 times i squared, which is positive 9, the sum of squares. 4 and 9 are perfect squares. On the top, that's not necessarily going to happen because these are not conjugates. They're actually the same thing. They're squares. We're going to have the square of a binomial. So let's use FOIL. We're going to get 4 minus 6i minus 6i, so minus 12i. I combine those middle terms plus 9i squared. Well, i squared is negative 1, so I change its sign, negative 9. Now I can combine some like terms. 4 minus 9 is negative 5 minus 12i. So once we simplify it, we get to this point. Well, now we can simplify it a little further because we have to do this addition for one thing, but we also have to write it in complex form that is standard, a plus bi. So let me add those together. I have negative 5 minus 12i over 13. To write this in standard form, I have to separate the real part from the imaginary coefficient. Well, the real part would be negative 5 over 13. And the imaginary part would be negative 12 over 13 times i, negative 12 over 13. I. So I've written it in a plus bi form. a is negative 5 thirteenths, and b is negative 12 thirteenths. 
What if we have this? I don't see a summer difference, but I see a i in a denominator. i is a radical, so I have to rationalize this denominator. Well, to rationalize that denominator, still use its complex conjugate. Its complex conjugate is just changing the sign. To change the sign, it's not a summer difference of terms. It's the summer difference of the term. So I'm going to write it as uh, negative i. I don't have to worry about a because in this case, a is 0. There is no real part to this. So I'm going to multiply by the conjugate negative i. If I do that bottom and top, we'll actually simplify this. 3i times negative i is going to give me 3 times negative i squared is negative 3i squared. Change the sign. i squared is a negative 1. So it gives me a 3 in the denominator. So hopefully we understand that, right? 3 times the negative 1 is negative 3i squared. Negative 3i squared, this changes the sign, so it becomes a positive 3. Now, here we have to distribute, and I'm going to do that up here. Negative i times 2 is negative 2i. Negative i times negative 3i is a positive i, or 3i squared. Excuse me. And this changes the sign. It's a negative 1. So this would be negative 3. And this is negative 2i. And I changed their order because I wanted an a plus bi form. And now I can simplify it one last time. The real part is negative 3 over 3, which is negative 1. And the imaginary coefficient is negative 2 over 3, negative 2 over 3i. So this is the simplification of that. And we multiply by the conjugate i value. All right, let's look at one more example here. This is actually for you to try. Multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate, simplify, and make sure you write it in a plus bi form. This has been section 6.7, multiplication and division with complex numbers. Thank you for watching.